Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here, and today's shout out goes to Steven FPV. Steven was first to say first in one of my recent videos, and thus wins this shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quad Copter 101 here with a new review of the new L109 Pro. Um, those of you that have uh, subscribed to my channel know that I've reviewed previously the L109S GPS drone. But what's the difference between this and the 109S? Well, the 109S is just had a uh, camera at the front that was not stabilized. It was also 1080p. So is this, by the way. I'll discuss that in a bit. But this one has an improvement, folks. A big improvement. And this is something we're starting to see now. Finally, finally, we're starting to see these show up in uh, the under, you know, in the under $200 class drones. And that is stabilized gimbal, okay, to, for stabilized video in flight. You know, um, without an unstabilized video, if you get hit by wind or buffeted by wind, your video is look, looks real bad, okay, because the camera is going to bounce around. But with a stabilized uh, uh, gyroscope, stabilized, stabilized gimbal, this keeps the video nice and level no matter what is going on with the drone. So that's great. That's a great advancement. Um, it should make the video look much better uh, in this particular drone. Now, um, what other things about this drone? Uh, we'll start off uh, with the airframe itself. We'll start off with the motors. We got 1406 brushless motors on this drone. So nice, powerful brushless motors to fly this particular drone. Uh, it's powered by three, uh, 3S battery, 11.1 volt uh, uh, battery. It's 1600 milliamp per hour. Let me see if I can plop it out for you. This comes out at an angle, folks, like the L109 previously that I reviewed, but bring it out like an angle. Uh, but it's 1600 milliamp per hour. I believe it's supposed to give it about 15 minutes flight time, 14, 15 minutes flight time. At least that's what I got with the original L109, uh, about 14 minutes of flight time uh, with the original. So I'm expecting something similar with this particular drone. Again, I mentioned it has a uh, two axis stabilized gimbal. And another important change is we finally have an SD card slot here to record the video directly to an SD card so we can avoid that um, Wi-Fi frame dropping that we normally see. Now, be very careful inserting your SD card into this slot because there is a little gap just above the SD card slot that you might accidentally slide this card in and then get it jammed in there. So make sure you, you have some resistance while you're pushing that in and springing this before you shove it all the way in or else you might have a hard time getting the card out. But again, I had to uh, double check as you're putting that card in to make sure that card is going into the slot. Okay, um, I mentioned something about the resolution of this camera. This is being advertised with a 4K camera. Okay, and what that means is the video or the photos, the still photos from this camera are sent to your phone and interpolate it with the RC GPS app to enlarge it to 4K resolution. In reality, folks, this is recording 1080p video to that card. You know, 1080p video is, uh, this has a 1080p sensor is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> So it's recorded 1080p video at uh, 25 frames per second. And also, if you take photos with this, it records 1080p still frame grabs from that video onto your SD card. So it's not a true 4K camera as per the, if the advertisement gives you that, infer, infer, if it infers that to you. <laughs> I'm using the wrong word there. If you get under the impression this is a true 4K, it is not. It's 1080p sensor on that camera. Um, it is a folding drone for maximum portability, and with that, let's talk about that portability. It does come with a very nice carrying case. Here's the carrying case for the drone, but it also they also give you these two little bags. If you don't want to use the carrying case, if you want to fold up the drone, put the drone in one bag and then fold up the uh, um, controller and put the controller in the second bag. So you got and put some accessories in there with it. So you can also use these little bags and then throw these in your backpack if you don't want to use the uh, carrying case that comes with it. So that's that's nice in itself there. Um, back to the drone itself, though. Um, we have an optical flow sensor on this drone. So uh, once you uh, initially turn this drone on, you could actually take off if you want to fly indoors. And it will uh, fly using the optical flow sensor to uh, maintain its position. But if you go outdoors, you really should be flying GPS. And that's when you wait until you get sufficient satellites. And this does have GPS, by the way. I forgot to mention that. 
And with that GPS, it has automatic return to home and landing on command, on loss of signal, or on low voltage. So that's pretty cool in itself. And it's not just a GPS system, it's GPS GLONASS, so for extra accuracy of the GPS system. It's using the Russian satellites also. Um, I mentioned the camera's 1080p, uh, 2x is gimbal, I mentioned that, the battery. Now, I haven't mentioned the range. This is predicted to have a range, FPV range, of 600 to 800 meters. I just flew another drone today. It had similar predicted range, and it actually did get out to 600 meters with FPV. So I was kind of impressed with that. So maybe this can get also 600 to 800 meters, along with control range of out to 1,200 meters. Um, the other drone that I reviewed today, I just flew today, also had 1,200 meters predicted control range, but in actuality... I was only able to get it to fly out to 600 meters before it lost signal from the controller. But 600 meters is nothing to sneeze at. That's pretty darn good. Okay, I mentioned uh, this uses the RC GPS app. And with that, let's bring up the caveat. This is an 802.11 AC Wi-Fi flying drone, 5 gigahertz flying drone. You need a phone with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, and not all phones have 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Before purchasing this... First, verify that your phone indeed has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi or you will be very disappointed as you will not be able to view the FPV video or use the RC GPS app with this drone. Okay, that's just a caveat. Now, I think you can still record video and fly a line of sight with the controller, but you will not be able to view video or use uh, the app to do the advanced features of FPV. Uh, follow me. Circle me and waypoints with the uh, RC GPS app, and let's go over the other things you get in the that comes with this. You get the instruction manual, which actually is a pretty good instruction manual, and I I was even able to read it with my old eyes. So they they printed it big enough so I could read it. Uh, you get a software instru instruction manual for the RC GPS app. You get a um, I got the two battery version. I believe they have one, two, or three battery version available. I recommend getting two battery at least because <laughs> you're going to want to keep flying. I know you will. So get get the two battery version because you're not going to be able, likely not be able to purchase additional spares after you buy this because of uh, um, safety restrictions and shipment of lipos. You know, unless this drone becomes very popular, I recommend getting more than one battery when you buy this. Okay, and you get a charger. Now look at this charger. Um, the 3S charger has a uh, 3S balance plug on there. So you, if you have happen to have a a male to male uh, balance plug that you can plug into a better charger, you can actually use a better charger than this uh, little one. But this one here, you're going to need a use a two amp wall charger or better to charge this battery. I do not recommend plugging this USB into your computer. To charge this big battery because it will take day or two <laughs> to charge it. You're going to need two amps output to charge this battery, at least two amps. And additionally, in the box, you get a spare set of full spare set of propellers. You get a USB cable, and um, you get a screwdriver and some screws for the uh, uh, spare props. Now let's go over the controller real quick. The controller on this is. Pretty darn cool because it has its own built-in battery. You don't need to put in AA batteries. And all of the buttons on it are well labeled. So um, it's easy to understand. You don't have to actually go into the instructions to figure this one out. But uh, what we got here, um, the upper scroll wheel here on the left is for rates. You can adjust the speed of the, the quadcopter or its rates as some of us call it. Well, some of us older drone pilots call it by moving this right or left. Um, you can adjust the angle of the camera, the camera lens, up or down, using this scroll wheel here. Um, you can take a photo by a quick press of this button here, which, which has little pictures of uh, cameras on it. Or you can take a video by holding this button down for two seconds, and that will start the video camera. Um, if you want to return to home uh, command, you press this button here, and the drone will automatically return to home and land uh, where it took off. Um, if you need to do a uh, uh, gyroscope calibration, if you want to fly in optical flow mode, uh, I recommend doing a gyroscope calibration by putting the drone on a flat level surface first and pressing this button here, and that will calibrate the gyros to maintain level flight in optical flow mode. And uh, for your first flight in GPS mode, uh, you will need to do a compass calibration, and you activate that by pressing 
this button here and I'll show you how to do that out in the field where you do three horizontal rotations and then three vertical rotations of the drone after pressing this button to calibrate the compass of this drone. Um, you can turn off the GPS if you want to fly in optical flow mode. That's cool. You can do that. If you, and by pressing this button here, that will turn off the GPS so that you can fly in optical flow mode if you so desire indoors. Um, you can fly in headless mode also with this drone by pressing this button here. It activates headless mode. And automatic takeoff and landing after you start the motors, I believe, by down or out or down and in by pressing this button here. And the power button is here. And it has a very nice LCD screen. I'm trying to adjust it so that well, I don't think I'll be able to do such <laughs> so that you can see it in the screen. But lots of telemetry information to let you know the GPS is on or off. Um, distance, range, uh, distance and height of the drone, um, s speed, the rates, whether you're recording video, number of satellites received, uh, the battery power of both the drone and the controller, and um, whether you're in optical flow or not. By It'll say mode 1 or mode 2 to let you know if you're in optical flow, I believe it's mode 1, mode 2 is uh, GPS mode, and number of satellites also, along with uh, control signal reception. So, that is it. Let's take the L109 Pro out into the field and see how it flies. So, hope you enjoy this flight, flight folks. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here out on a beautiful day in the desert. Really beautiful day here on a Sunday morning, early Sunday morning with the wind is kind of low right now. Later on in the day, it's supposed to pick up, so i got to get this done right fast. <laughs> okay, um, to start up the L109 Pro, we need to press this button here. A quick press and then a long press. So one and then a long press. And then we hear those chirps. That's the ESCs chirping up. Then we got to put the drone on the ground and then turn on the transmitter almost immediately. Okay. If you wait too long to turn on this transmitter, it will uh, not connect and you're going to have to start over again. Okay. And also, uh, you check your gimbal, make sure it levels. It takes about uh, 15 20 seconds to level, do its, do its check and level. So we're good there. And the first thing we need to do is the compass calibration. Right now it's blinking, looking for satellites, blinking green. But we want to press this button here to do the compass calibration. And right now they're rapidly blinking green. So we are in compass calibration mode when you see rapid blinking like that. So we're going to do three turns like this until we hear a beep. Yeah. <laughs> Another turn like this until we hear a beep. Actually, I think we're done. All the lights are solid. How about, no, the front lights are red, so we got to continue turning. It's not happy yet. Front red lights are still blinking. Maybe I'll try nose up. See if that helps. Yep. Let's try horizontal again. And next thing I'm going to try is counterclockwise. <laughs> yeah, counterclockwise, folks. Um, the instructions are wrong. you got to turn this counterclockwise to do the compass calibrations. Let me make sure the light is solid now. Light is solid in the front. Light is solid in the, or light is blinking in the back because we are looking for a GPS right now. So when that when you got a slow blinking light that means it's searching for gps signals okay we got compass calibration completed um right now we're still in mode one which means we are in altitude hold mode let me connect it to the app and by the time i get it connected to the app we should have sufficient satellites to fly right now we got seven. Oh, seven i guess is the minimum number okay and it's still saying mode one but uh, i'm going to turn this on here and connect to the app so hold on folks okay this is the rc gps app available on google play and the app store and you want to select l109 gps pro okay there's an l109 gps and there's an l109 you want the l109 gps pro for this particular drone okay and to open up the app we go and just click on controls not quick start but we click on controls and it says plane has received the GPS signal and can take off normally. Please observe around. Okay, and then just hit cancel. And we see that we have um, FPV video showing from the drone. Okay, to start the camera, we're going to do a long press of this button here. And video is recording. 
because we have a blinking yellow camera there. And we also get a uh, camera sig or insignia in the LCD screen. Okay, to start the motors, wait, make sure there's an automatic takeoff. No, there's no, oh yeah, there is an automatic takeoff button. Okay, to start the motors, bring down a knot, and then press the automatic takeoff button. And we're checking stability. Let me get in the view of the camera and say, how do you like my shirt today, folks? And also sync up the camera. <laughs> I'm seeing a lag of about two seconds. <laughs> One to two seconds lag in the FPE video. But let's go up a bit higher. And while we're up there, let me put on my glasses because we're about to go out, folks, and see how far, what type of range we can get with this. Okay, so let me go up a bit higher again, and also let me lower the gimbal a bit, so we're not getting any prop. I want to make sure we're not getting prop. Okay, that's too far, too far down. <laughs> let me observe it while I'm doing this, because there's a second lag. Come down a little lower. There we go. How are we doing there? A little bit higher. A little bit higher. Okay, that gimbal looks good. Right there. Okay, let's go up more, <coughs> excuse me, and then hop on and see what type of range we can get, both FPV and control range. I'm going to turn a little bit to the left there, and away we go. Going up higher too, so I can keep it above the mountains. So, right now, <coughs> excuse me, folks. We're about 60 meters out, only 10 meters up. I want to take it up to about 20 meters, so I'm going to slowly climb as we're going out, bud. I'm going to turn to the left a bit, too. Turn to the left a bit. And then going up higher. I want to take it up slowly to 20 meters, 15 meters out. 17 meters, 18, 19, 20 meters up, 160 meters out. We'll just continue on. Okay. I'm keeping my eye on it. I can still see it. We're 220 meters away. Just a slow trip out into the desert. Seeing what type of range we can get with this. Now the antennas on this controller are not real. They're fake antennas, so you don't have to worry about pointing them. <laughs> the antenna obviously is inside the controller itself. 330 meters, according to my LCD screen. I like these drones that have uh, telemetry on an LCD screen so you don't have to depend on your phone. It's hard to see my phone, what my phone is doing out here in a bright sunny day here. Checking to make sure the numbers, well, the numbers seem to froze, so I think I might be past FPV range on this right now, but still flying out, Bond. Still have sight on it, 460 meters. So, you know, whatever it's doing, it's recording to its um, <laughs> SD card, okay? I think we might be out of range of the uh, FPV range on my screen, but I'm flying line of sight right now, watching that little dot in the sky. I better go up a little bit higher. Right now, it's right above Morris Peak, so that's helping me maintain visual sight on it. We're 600 meters away. That's pretty darn good, actually, for this little drone, 600 meters. It's starting to get real hard to see. I'm going to stop here shortly because it's getting real hard to see, but I, I maintain a sight on it by keeping my eye above Owen's Peak. But we're coming up on 700 meters. I think this can go a lot farther, and I'm not going to do that today, folks, because there's other things I want to demonstrate, but we are going to demonstrate return to home. Okay, I'm pressing that button right now. Okay. And let's see if those numbers start decreasing. They are decreasing, 630, 620, so it's coming back. So I stopped going out further. Um, I was going to lose sight of it there. <laughs> it was getting real hard to see. And besides, again, I want to demonstrate other features while I still have battery power. Although I do have another battery. <laughs> so this has really good control range. I don't know about the FPV range. I think it was... Let's see, is numbers decreasing on my screen on the FPV screen? No, the FPV screen is frozen, so I did lose uh, FPV reception somewhere there. Uh, we'll find out in post-production here of the video. Let's see how accurate the return to home and landing is from out there close to 700 meters. 
of this little drone. It's a little drone. Um, next thing I need to do is start lowering the weight on these drones to get them below 250 grams for most countries. <laughs> but let's see, it start to, uh, oh, it's coming down nicely. It's nice and slow descent, not wobbly at all. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now keep in mind, this is recorded 1080p, 25 frames per second. That, that's actually good for most people, folks. Um, we're seeing a lot of these drones claiming 4K cameras, and it's obviously false, including this one here. Because, you know, the only 4K you get out of this one is its uh, interpolation for a 4K uh, still photos. But, you know, they're interpolated from 1080p. Okay, we still... Still have a good battery power. Let's put it back on the pad. I regained the signal. Now I want to stop that video because I want to save that video. So we're going to press the video button one more time and hold it down. And then restart it. And this time we're going to go take to the air and take a photo or two of my nice bright shirt. And automatic takeoff. Back into the air. Okay, we're in the air. Give it a little throttle. A little too high. Too high, too high. Okay, okay, let's take a, I'm in the picture. Did that take? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's taking video right now. Let me stop that video. Okay, let's take a photo. Okay, another pose. Go up a bit higher. Another photo. Coming back down. One more photo. <laughs> okay, and let's give it time to download it. And one more photo just to make sure that the camera's working. Okay, that gimbal's working nicely. Holding it nice and steady. Let's go up a bit more. And we'll try uh, circle position. Let me take my glasses off so I can see the screen. Pressing circle position. And we're going to do a radius. Let's go up a bit higher too. Of a 20 meter circle. And done. And confirm. So it's going out 20 meters. It's turning back toward me where it was. Pointing its camera back toward me. Also, let's start the video recording. Oh, I should have done that before I... Come back here. I should have started the video camera before I start the circle position. As soon as I hit that video camera, it stopped. So let's do that again. Circle position. And then hit 20. And then hit done. So you got to hit that camera before, uh, start the video recording before you start the circle position. And it plops itself there, and now it's circling. Doing a nice job. I'm kind of impressed what I'm seeing here so far. It's working well. It's circle position. <laughs> Point of, point of interest, although I'm not sure where its camera is pointing. Let's get over here. I think this is where it's at. <laughs> I'll let it do another half circle or so, and then we'll go into follow me. How's my battery power? My battery power is about half power. Okay, that's enough of circle position. And uh, let's bring it back over. Right about there. And now I'm going to select follow. Okay, follow me should be activated. And I'm still recording. Is it going to follow? Oh, it is following. And, and on top of that, it's using the Hobson type of follow me. I like the Hobson type where it maintains a, uh, a, a compass position from you, a relative position from you, and just stays there. Okay, the DJI style will flop all around the, the sky. This one here, you know, if the sun's, say, right there, <laughs> I want to keep... Keep it pointed away from the sun so you get better video. That's why I like this type, this style of video. You can, you know, send it off in the direction of the sun and it'll maintain its look. Now, I'm looking at my screen here. <laughs> that gimbal is not as responsive as I hope it would be. It's a little bit wobbly, but it's doing a darn good job of following me. Let's see if the old man picks up a run. Let's jog a bit. If you see me drop, folks, call 911. <laughs> okay, coming back toward it. 
follow me is working exceptionally well. <laughs> this is a nice drone. Okay, although again, the, the gimbal, look at that folks, that gimbal has a little bit to be desired. <laughs> okay, turning off the uh, follow me, uh, we are still recording. Let's try the waypoints. Okay, waypoints are on. Our location, we're somewhere in the world trying to find us. Where are we at, folks? There we are in California. Let me zoom in a bit and hit. Try to select a position, invalid coordinate point. Let's zoom in some more. One there, one there. How about over here and there? And then back again. Well, right there, that's fine. And then hit send. Well, I hit send and then stop. Wait, I hit it two times. Hit send again. There we go. So there's the waypoints. Now, the map you get, notice my map is blank. That's because I'm in the desert. It's, it's not showing the roads out here in the desert. But um, the map mode, um, it's, it uses Google Maps. It does show up even if you're... Uh, well, it shows up through data network. You don't have to download these maps ahead of time, and is what I'm trying to say, folks. Um, it, it uses the data network, your data, your phone data network, to uh, go to these different points. Okay, my battery's getting low, I guess. And it comes right back to you at, at the end of the mission. That is cool there. I like that. So, okay, we are getting low on battery power. Um, let me go back to view, or switch back to uh, normal view by turning off waypoints. I'm going to start and stop or stop the video real quick. Video stop, then I'm going to restart it and we're going to use the remaining battery power. Okay. Uh, remaining battery power and see what and we're going to continue flying and, until the battery uh, depletes and see what it does. Let's see if there's a geofence first off. See if I can fly, fly further than 30 meters. No, there's a geofence. So it's it keeps you within a circle of 30 meters from the takeoff position. Let's go over here. Let's, let's go over in this direction. There's a takeoff pad there. Actually, it might be 30 meters from my position. <laughs> I tried to figure that out. I'm going to walk up the road a bit, 30 meters away, and see what happens. Turning that way, turning to, back toward me. Is it my position or the takeoff position? We're going to find out. It appears to be my position that it'll fly 30 meters away. So that's telling me uh, it, if you're on a boat or something or on a moving object, it'll follow your. Let's see. No, no, I'm sorry. It's takeoff position. Takeoff position. Because it's not. I'm trying to push it forward. It's not going forward. I'm trying to bring it back toward me. Flying overhead. Flopping it around. Okay, with the second battery, we're going to go um, FPV exploring of the desert once this battery depletes. More demonstration of the camera, but we demonstrated follow me, circle me, and waypoints. Those are the biggies on this type of app, and the app is reasonably good. There is about two second lag, as you know, that depends on your camera or your phone, too. I got an older phone, about three years old. Those of you with higher end phones. <laughs> That shouldn't be a, a problem. Okay, I'm just going to come down low. We're just going to go around the bushes around the area here. As we wait for that battery to deplete. We are really low now. Is it going to drop from the sky or is it going to land? Is the question. 
it's actually a nice little drone. You know, um, again, it's gimbal. It's not as responsive as you would expect, but this is a low-end drone. So keep that in mind. You know, it's not going to be like a high-end drone, but it's still reasonably good. Flying it until the battery's depleted. Now the sun is real low in the sky right now, so um, we're also demonstrating <laughs> how well its camera adjusts to uh, going toward the sun and away from the sun. <laughs> Uh, let's go to a higher rate. <laughs> this is okay. Let's put it on second rate. Let's see how fast it goes. Third rate. Let's see how fast it'll go. Oh, it's very responsive. This is high speed rate, and there it runs into the wall. Okay, there's the return to home. Where's it going to return? Okay, it's pretty far off. <laughs> That's unusual it came over here. Did I land here before? I don't think so. It's low battery return to home is, is kind of far off <laughs> from over there. I don't know. 15 minutes. How far are we? Oh, I take off it's saying zero but we are a good uh, I don't know 20 meters away but again you know on low battery it brings itself back within a 30 meters position of its takeoff point so that's shouldn't be too bad let me stop the video camera right now real quick make sure it does stop and let me throw another battery in and then we'll do some FPV long-range exploring around the area here so hold on folks Okay, I put a second battery in there. We should be ready to go. We got 19 satellites. I am starting the video recording now. The wind is starting to pick up, so we're going to see how this operates in wind too. And uh, starting the motors, down and out, and then pressing the automatic takeoff. Okay, see it's tilting in the wind. The wind is starting to pick up here. And got to go up higher here. Notice how it goes up and down with the wind. That's the barometer altitude hold. So for this flight, we're going to need to go up a bit higher. So we don't bump into the ground. Now, again, I want air it and bring it back down again real quick so I can see that gimbal. Now, I want to lower that gimbal. That's going up. Lower, lower, lower. Not that. Yeah, let's go straight down as far as it'll go. I guess that's about it. Okay, well, with that in mind, I'm going, I want to, um, Go into headless mode, pressing headless mode button, pointing it toward me there, pointing the drone toward me, and we are going to do an up and away. Pushing. Okay. That's the up and away, up and away. Now that uh, gimbal does not point all the way down, so I can't do a rocket type of. <laughs> up and away but there you go that's it up and away so we demonstrated headless mode coming back in turning off headless mode pushing forward bringing it back toward me and raising up that gimbal again with the two eye a little bit lower let me plop it there for a second lower 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 okay that's about right so let's go for a uh, long range exploration flight <laughs> FPV Explorer let me increase the rate too we're in second rate I'm not going to third rate because it um, I don't the yaw is too much on third rate that I lose control of the drone I'm gonna be flying mainly line of sight here folks and if you go have too much yaw while flying line of sight you overshoot your corrections as you're flying the way I'm doing this folks if I want to bring the drone back to me while I'm pushing forward and it's flying forward and it, if the drone's moving to the left, all I got to do is turn left to bring it back toward me. And if the drone's moving to the right, all I got to do is turn right to bring it back to me. And I do that until I see the movement stop. I continue turning until the movement stops. 
And that way I know it's coming back to work. Okay, we're about 265 meters out over there. We should be uh, going over the uh, garbage pile that's over there right now. I'm going to go a little bit higher because it's off in the distance in the horizon and the mountains are there. And I have to keep the drone above the mountains so I can see it. <laughs> see a little dot in the sky. But see, you can fly long-range FPV without using an FPV screen is what I am trying to convey to you folks. <laughs> this is a skill you all should learn, really. If, if you're into drone flying, how to fly line of sight. And we're going down this other gully here. Turning left, turning left, until the movement slows. Okay, so right now we should be coming straight down the gully. Yeah, this is a nice little explorer, and it's flying in the wind. Wind's about five miles per hour right now. It's gonna pick up even more as the day goes on. I kinda like this one. And it's great that finally uh, drone makers are realize that people want stable video. They're, Get tired of this jerky video on these uh, um, $150 drones, $200 drones. There's no reason for that. So <laughs> finally, finally installing uh, gimbals onto these drones. They've found a way to make them low cost so that they can put them on these drones, and that's great. Now the next thing they need to do is make sure that all these drones are under 250 grams, and they have big winners. But for most people. 250 grips is not an issue. Um, it's five dollars, five minutes of your time on the FAA website. FAA.gov. Don't for those in the US, don't go anywhere but FAA.gov <clears throat> to get that certificate because a lot there's a lot of scammers out there. Well they're I guess they're not really scammers. Some of them are not. They're but they're taking a lot of your money to do five minutes of work. <laughs> It's five dollars and five minutes of your time to get your your uh, registration number. Okay, going off that way. So far, I I really am liking what I'm seeing. Nice exploration of the desert right now. It's doing a good job. Okay, how far are we? We're 230 meters at. Okay, let's bring it, or I'm gonna go about another 90 degrees from my position here and then we'll bring it back. We're at 320 meters, turning to the left. It's moving to the left, so I'm turning it to the left. Moving to the left, turning to the left. Okay, it's coming back to Warby somewhat. Okay, I want it to come straight back to Warby right about now, so let's turn it until it stop, the movement stops. Turn it left until the movement stops. So right now, it should be coming straight back to Warby because the movement has stopped. Or stopped. And it is. And I'm coming down lower, lower, lower. Oh, turn to the left too much. my head. So all in all, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let me bring it over here. Plop it right about there. There's something I forgot to do that I wanted to do. And that is sync up the cameras. Okay, I've I've lost FPV. I don't know when that lost up there, but right now it's not recording FPV. And I forgot to hit Mob is in recording too. So hopefully we got all that video. Uh, Mob is in recording again. I'm s and GPS! I <laughs> see GPS has stopped with Mob is in. So we're going to skip the Mob is in and fly this again. We're, we're flying this line of sight without using the uh, app, in other words. So I'm just going to skip out of the app. We don't need that app to fly. Okay. Um,
again, syncing up the cameras, or I got stuck in video recording again, syncing up the cameras, we still have, uh, oh, our battery power is starting to get a little bit low because of that run. Let's go at it. Let me plop it there for a second. That wind's starting to hit it a bit. We're starting the video camera. Video camera's recording. Now I'm syncing up the cameras. And we'll go out again. Until we start hearing the beep, 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 telling us that the, um, telling us that the battery's getting low. We'll see what it does. We're gonna see it come back within that 30 meter circle. So we'll go up about uh, 200, 300 meters up the road here. Try to stay over the road. Pick it up. It's about seven miles per hour now. I hope it's not uh, making too much noise in my hat phone. 160 meters out. Two hundred thirty. We should come across the first crossroads. I'm coming up on the second crossroads at about three hundred meters. We should be starting to see it. Okay, we're at three hundred meters right now, so we should be at the crossroads. Now I want to turn to the right where the garbage is and go off. The garbage is right there, so we should be right over it. And then we're going to turn to the right again. Come back, come back, come back. Turn to the right until the movement stops. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Okay, movement stops, so and I'm pushing forward. So it should be coming relatively straight back to me. Okay, there's our low battery. Okay, we are outside 30 meters. It's bringing itself back within that 30 meter circle. That's what it does in low battery. It comes straight back and brings it back within 30 meters of its uh, takeoff point. Okay, we're coming back down. Let's bring it back down. We're going to finish out the battery. See what its flight time with its second battery is. Coming down, coming down. Okay, there's it being buffeted in the wind. Let's see how this uh, gimbal is doing in the wind. The wind is picking up quite a bit. But its gimbal is working. Let's see if we can see that, folks. As it being buffeted in the wind, its, it's gimbal is staying level. <laughs> so, that works. I'm gonna stop, or let me sync up that camera. Stopping the video. Starting the video one more time. Oh, that wind's really picking up now. Good thing I got here real early. <laughs> I knew this wind was going to pick up. As the sun climbs higher, throws more energy into the sky, it gets very windy here. That's why I always fly early in the morning <laughs> to avoid this wind. Okay, let's. We're going to finish out the battery. Let's go to super high rate, okay? And to do that, I have... This is its highest rate, folks. Let's see what it can do in the wind, too. And turning around. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that wind's buffeting it now. I better not do that. We're going to go back to low rate. That wind is starting to get excessive for it. So we're going to land it here, folks. I'm bringing it, trying to bring it back to its pad. The wind's getting about getting close to 7 to 10 miles per hour. So that seems to be the limit for this drone. Um, keep that in mind. You don't want to go above about 10 miles per hour wind. So we're not going to fly this until the battery dies. So I'm going to land it right here. It's starting to get buffeted by that wind. So, wind limitation about, it's, yeah, about seven to 10 miles, that's no, about 10 miles per hour. I see a lot of things uh, fluttering big time over there. So we're, that's why we're calling it quits there. So let's stop that video recording. Um, so all in all, I kind of like what I see. Everything seems to work as advertised. <laughs> 
Uh, most things seem to work as advertised. Um, uh, limitation of wind, about 10 miles per hour. Um, it's gimbal, you know, it's it's not the best. There, there were some limitations there. And it happens, as you can see, as this gimbal, you know, right and left um, has limitation of about, ooh, I'd say about 20 degrees before um, it hits its stop and will also move. So keep in mind, it's not perfect. You know, it's for lower wind days, not not a day like today. So I, I expect we have seen a lot of buffeting uh, while this thing was uh, being hit by the wind. But you know, see, about 20 meters, 20 degrees, 15, 20 degrees, either plus or minus each way. So that's the limitation of this. Up or down is great. It's got a lot of up or down, but right and left, not, not so much. But it's enough for most people. So I kind of do like this. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. This quad cup 101 with the L109 GPS Pro. Signing out. Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.